So here we go. Jesse Davis, Super Bowl competitor to number one in front of a huge crowd out on his own. He has three minutes on the countdown before his time starts. I, wouldn't, I don't think there's really much point in doing this, but I'm going to put the live positions up on there. Do we get the times? No, we only get the laps. So what we need... Effectively, this is qualifying, isn't it? There we go. Is he going to use all of the three minutes of his warm-up or will he come in just before it ends? That's tactical as well. Sometimes the fuel the cars halfway through and then send them back out. Halfway through is now. And the reason that they do that, and that's exactly what they're going to do here. Car being fuelled now. And what I suggest they'll do now is let Jesse drive around and get into the rhythm and then run straight into his timed laps. Saw that it, this at the Europeans in Malus. A lot of people, a couple of people, went to three minutes, came in, and then basically had to start from cold again. Whereas the tack, it's gone quiet. You can feel the tension. Yeah, just another bit of tweaking going on. Asking for some changes. Now, I think the, what the mechanic was saying, are you going? Are you going from now? Is this it? Are you going to go for the run? 27 seconds left before Jesse's time starts. It looks quick, but it looks a bit lively at the back end. 12 seconds left. He's going to start his run. Live on RC Racing TV from the IFMAR. One eighth I see Track Worlds. Our infinity coverage of Super Pole starts now. Oh, he's pitted straight away. One final top up with fuel. I'm not sure this is the right tactics. He's on time. I'm going to turn Harry's mic up next to me louder so you can hear a bit more car noise. Probably should probably hear me in the background as well. As you can see, the time has started on the top of our timing monitor. Listen to that engine scream. 15.991 first lap time. It looks a bit interesting at the rear. 15.903. Second lap. Are we going to get a mid-15 from Jesse? Here he comes through the Shepard. That's all oh, very wide in the parabolic. Uh, through Conrad. 16.031. That was slower. So 15.903. Still the time to beat. Oof, and another mistake now. Get yourself back together. 17-1. So late on the brakes there. Magnificent stuff. No hint of a lift through the parabolic at this time. That looked good to me. 15-9-5-5. He's building up to another one. He's so late. The power is on until he turns in. This is nice. Sliding it around, but is he sliding it around too much? He's... Oh, a huge one. A huge one. Round of applause from in front of us. What did he... Oh, it's the inside curve. 
Seen this so many times. Can you slow that down a little bit more, H, and play that again? That what you're seeing here is as soon as the front wheels go off the ground. Now, here he comes into the parabolica. Turns in there maybe a tad early. He's fighting the rear end just a tiny bit, but he gets it hooked up. Clips the inside curb. As soon as the front wheels are off the ground, the air's underneath and just lifts it up. We've seen that in 1-1 racing and it's very nasty indeed. Led to a raft of aerodynamic changes. Listen to this. That's from the crowd in front of us. Bruno Coelho, the Portuguese driver, without headset, I think, there. Normally wears it on his right ear, likes to hear his engine. Uh, I'm just trying to work out if I... No, probably can't. I've taken Jesse's time off the screen there. That was an entertaining six laps, says 74 Tappy. Did somebody get what that was? I think it was 15s. Well, Bruno Coelho in his warm up of three minutes. So for some reason, we've lost the time from Davis there. If anybody jotted that down, please let me know. I had the pen out and then forgot to use pen on paper. I got too exciting, excited with the uh, run. It was, uh, it was a 15.903, I am told, for by performance. That was his second lap. Thank you. Stefan Günther says, tried a headset many years ago. Didn't like it a bit. De de detached from the car. Well, I've said this before. Uh, in full-size racing, most of my racing has been done at a level where you didn't need to have radio communications. And I put a set of very snugly fitting earplugs in that uh, Dawn Flynn made for me at Ear Everything. And I use them on my motorcycle as well. But I uh, have done a couple of outings recently. I'm on the back end of last year, and I've got another one coming up as well, actually, where I've got to hear the guys in the pits and race control. And it is bizarre to have someone talking in your ear. So... Jesse has put down a marker of 15.903. I think uh, that we have a, six, a 15 and a half here. You might just be able to hear the car as it comes by us. We don't have effects mics out there because it tends to get very, very noisy. But uh, we've rigged something up here. And when he's going down the first corner, I'm going to shut up so that you can hear how long they're on the power. Uh, nine seconds to go. Stefan, I've been married for over 10 years now. Um but the responsible adult never talks in my ear, particularly not when I'm working. Right, here we go. Bruno Coelho, multiple champion, multiple disciplines. The greatest all-rounder of his time? Discuss. Right, have a listen. He was on the power so long there. 
coming back towards us. Coelho across the line, 15.954. Another very, very late lift into the corner. This is his second lap. He's tidy. Oh, bit of curb there. Past us. Fifteen eight seven zero. He's gone ahead. Here's his third lap. Comes to the end of it. Past us. Listen to the engine. Sixteen one three one on his third lap. So it's an eight seven zero. His fastest lap at the moment. This looks tidy though. Back towards us. Across the timing line. Fifteen eight four four. That's his best lap. Can he get one more in? This is his fifth and final flyer. Comes to the line. 15, 8, 5, 8. Very, very good indeed. Well, he's continuing. He's been allowed to continue. No. Round of applause. 15 8 4 4 for Bruno Coelho, the Portuguese driver. Well, Masami, the all time greatest and most versatile, says Stefan Gunther. Is Bruno the best of his generation, though? Already, uh, I think he's had five European finals this year. Been on the podium in all bar one of them. Right, let's have a look at Noato up on the driver's stand. If you can push into him, please, Ash. And we'll uh, have a look at what's going on below. There is the picture of concentration. Nato Matsukura knows how to go on at this level, but how will he be with the pressure of everyone watching? And it really is everyone watching. Now, just having a quick final chat with his pit lane. This is what it looks like downstairs. And while we're watching downstairs, Ash, if you can just get in on the crowd again and uh, have a look. The car is out. And everyone watching around the paddock area. That's the pressure. I noticed that Matsukura didn't look off to his left. Grandstand filling up as well. It's a chilly day. Is there a better than 15.844 time here for the Infinity OS engined protoform bodied car in the hands of Nato Matsukura? This is his warm-up. It's not very often in qualifying that I feel like I should be like a snooker commentator. But I really do here because the tension is from the is coming from the crowd as well, from, as well from the drivers. And it, it's a tension I think that needs to be respected. Still 1 minute 50 of running to go little tweak on the engine you need five good laps I reckon and you should be able to improve here third of four drivers to go 
If Mar Worlds, Infinity, live coverage at RC Racing TV. Hello, I'm John Hindoff, and this is Nato Matsukura. He's got just on a minute of his warm-up time left. Is he happy? How late was he there? There's a hubbub of excitement as he comes past us onto the start finish straight. Oh, he's halfway in through his turning into that first corner before he thinks of lifting off. This is one hooked up car. How early is he getting on the power there for Conrad? I love the car on the lift. When he lifts off the throttle, it really seems secure. We might be going to see something very special here. 16 seconds. Does he pit for one last time? He does. Top up the fuel. Then. See, I think, I think I'd just let them run. I would f fuel it with about a minute to go. He's getting himself loose. <sighs> breathe. Breathe. Here we go. He's on time now. So when he crosses the line, right under Ash's camera, now he starts. He's flying lap it loose on the first exit of Conrad Corner. Super late into the first hairpin through the Shepherdess. Couple of little blips of the throttle. I don't think he's quite happy, but he's good through the parabolic and massive through there. Oh, that was a good time. 15.959 is the opening gambit. Oh, big curb there. Threw him off just a little bit. Second lap. Fifth, no, 16.084. Thought he was a little ragged there. Breathe. Come on, sir. Yes, that's nice. That's very nice. Just got offline. Coming out the Shepherdess, though. Third lap. 15.858. That's his best. He's getting close. An 8.44 is what he needs. It's fractions of a second. Does he know how close he is? Dare we take his eyes off the infinity chassis that he's racing at the moment. 16.2. One more lap. He's been a bit inconsistent here. Fast lap, slow lap. Fast lap, slow lap so far. Oh, look at that. That's brilliant stuff. Oh, I think he just lost the back end there. Might have cost him half a tenth. 15.715. That's the fastest lap. And there's a roar, an intake of breath of excitement there. 15.715 and across the line again. 15.896. Oh, that's strong. 15.715. And you can hear the round of applause for... Naoto Matsukura, no PA here. Everybody watching timing and scoring. And uh, some of them tuned in to us trackside here. So, here's how it has stood so far. We've had Jesse Davis from Australia, 15.903 on his second lap. 15.844, Bruno Quelo on I think it's fourth of five laps and 15.915 from Naoto Matsukura on his fifth of five laps. Simon Kersbuk. One lap for a direct passage into the World Championship Finals. Spoke to us yesterday. The interview is up on the website. from Switzerland multiple champion of course says he feels this track is a real world championship standard challenge little nod and a thumbs up from his pit lane team and he's out on the circuit
This is warm up. So, Kurzburg. Now, what will his tactic be? Will he run close to the end and then give himself a flying start, or will he come in and just start the three minutes? There's no timing running at the moment. But I can tell you, that was a sub-16 second lap. I've got the stopwatch running here. These are just practice, practice laps, of course, but he's trying to get the car settled, which it wasn't there, was it? See if he stays out this time around. And we'll give you some unofficial timing as he comes through. Well, he's out. Again, a very late lift to back the car into that first left-handed hairpin through the Shepherdess. <sighs> he's flat there. 15.88, I reckon. That last lap. If that is anything to go by. If that's right, then he's going to be there or thereabouts, isn't he? No points for second here. <coughs> it's go fast or go home. A 15.715 will put him into the World Championship A-Main final on Saturday. Is the pressure on? Stefan Gunther says he looks slow and that normally... Equals fast. Coming up for his first timed lap of five. Starts it now. No. Check that. 40 seconds left on his warm-up. Hand-off peaking early. Not really a headline that's going to shock people. He does look good, doesn't he? Just shouting down a few little last minute adjustments. Cars down. And the clock's running at stake after five flying laps, of which this is the first. It's a direct entry onto the grid in the final. It will get him second place behind Dario Balestri, who is our TQ. First lap for the Swiss driver. Looks tidy. Looks very tidy indeed as he goes across the line. 16-0. 16-0-3-7. Coming across the line for lap two. Mm, did he lift off a bit early there? 15-8-8-0. That's the third best lap we've seen so far lap three that's good like it oh back end look really hooked up there across the line for three oh maybe a little wide there but did he get the time a 728 728 he needs a 715 did that slight overcooking it though ruin the entrance to the final corner which is the first corner of the lap effectively as far as time is concerned he's lost it oh Goes back sensibly to get a run. That was a good lap. That was a good lap. And this is his last one. This is his last lap. It's now or never. At the moment, it's Naoto Matsukura by fractions. Cross the line. 16 or 3 7. He's on the ragged edge again. 15, 8, 1, 2. And the shouting that you heard was Matsukura-san celebrating Matsukura with a 7, 1, 5 against a 7, 2, 8. 
So what, 13 thousandths of a second? And was this the moment that it all went wrong for Simon Kersbrook? He was on a really good lap here on his fourth lap. Came into the what effectively was the final corner. Ditch hooking on the inside, the right front tyre getting caught and costing him. He just didn't make the timing line. One more look at that if we can, H. And coming in, he looked really hooked up there, took a bit of curb, but just dropped down off the curb. And there it was, gone. 15.728, he needed a 15.7. One five. Noto Matsukura goes into the final. 